Today, I want to go over some microvellum basics, particularly drawing walls and products and some of the problems that can pop up with that and then how to address them. So I'm just going to create a project in a room here. So for starters, let's say we want to draw a wall and put some cabinets on it. And when we do this, there are a few different ways that you can draw a wall. So you can pick points to draw a wall, which is usually my preferred way to do it. And so first, when you go to room components and go to your walls, you can right click. And then I picked that option. So this just means I can pick a couple points to draw a wall. Now, what's important to remember here is it's still essentially, it's going to put your walls on the outside of whatever points you pick from left to right. So as long as if I'm drawing like an L shape or a U shape, it's essentially going to let me draw a P line first. If I draw a U shape like this. You'll notice it puts the walls to the outside. Now, if I were to do that again and pick the other way, say I wanted to come around this way, you'll notice it put the walls to the inside. So why is that important? Because this might look right, and you might be able to try to make this right, but what happens if I try to put a product on these walls? So if I put a product on a wall, I'm going to anchor left. So the cabinet is going to end up as I would expect on the front of that wall. If I put a product on this wall, it's going to put it on the outside. So usually if I wanted it on this wall side, there's no way to put a cabinet on the back side of a wall. So this is why it's important. The way that you draw your color line, the way that you pick your points, the way you draw your wall matters because the cabinets only attach to this. Now I could mess around with this and try to fake it to get the cabinets where I want, but the better choice is to make the draw the walls the way I need. Another, the other way you can draw walls though, is I could start with the polyline. So maybe I already have something drawn, right? So I can pick, I can select a polyline for this and it'll draw that. And you'll notice it put it on the outside based on the direction that I originally drew that polyline. And that polyline is still there. And I don't know if you know this, but polylines in general in AutoCAD, this goes, affects other things like machining and things, the direction you draw it determines how things interact with it. So I went from left to right, I started here and, and ended over here. So that means the walls are going to be, so in the direction you're going, they're going to be on the left. So because I went from this point to that point, the wall is going to be on the left side of this line. Now, I don't know if you guys know this, but you can actually edit a polyline and reverse it. So say I reverse this. What will happen now if I draw walls, put them to the inside. So reversing it made it as if I drew the wall, the P line going this direction. So those are all important things to remember. Now that these walls are here, there's no easy way to get these all flipped around because walls are essentially like individual products. Now that they're drawn, I can prompt individually. So let it be. Erase all this for a minute. Okay. So let's say now, let's put some more cabinets on here. In general, for most of our clients, we're drawing a microbellum. It's best to draw on walls and draw your cabinets attached to those walls. So now, like when I placed this cabinet, I placed it on the wall and that associates it with this wall. So if I draw a 2D elevation from this cap from this wall, 
I am going to get the 2D elevation of the cabinets that are attached to it. So now that I have that first cabinet associated with the wall, if I draw another cabinet, I could either place it on the wall or I could place it next to another cabinet. And if I'm placing it next to this cabinet that's already on that wall, then this new cabinet will be associated to that wall. They see how it drew the 2D elevation there. So both of these cabinets are associated with this wall, which is what I want. Because then anytime I, up, re I just redraw the wall or redraw the cabinets. Now, what if say I drew a cabinet and I didn't place it on the wall, I place it in a selected point and I put right here. They see how I didn't get an elevation of this cabinet. So let's look also what it is. Okay, so put it where I want it. In space, it's in the right place. But no matter what I do, if I would redraw this wall, that cabinet is not associated to this wall, so it's not going to draw it. So how do I get this associated to this wall? I go back up to room cabinet, room components. I can right click and associate products to wall. And this isn't exactly intuitive, but I'm going to pick the wall I want to associate it to. Enter or right click, and then I'm going to pick the product. And now this product is associated to this wall. So if I redraw, confirm, it's going to draw that 2D elevation. So now let's put in some upper cabinets. So I want to put an upper one door. Right above this, I want to do the same orientation. So let me do one door and I could place it on the wall. Since these are already associated, I could place it next to another product. So if I don't say, I don't know exactly where it is, but I know that I want it to align to these cabinets. My instinct, what I would do is I would place it next to another product and I would place it on the left side of this cabinet, which is where this is. And then for width, I don't remember what width that was. So I'm going to double click and pick the points for the width. So that was 20. And it should put it right on top of this cabinet, make it the same width. Because I associated, it, it's going to draw the 2D elevation now is associated to that wall. Let's go see. We should have a toe kick somewhere, base cabinet accessories. I'm going to place this on the wall and get 76.5. Okay. So now I've got a toe kick on the wall underneath my cabinets. So the other nice thing about having all of my cabinets associated to a wall is if I need to draw a section, say I want to draw this section. And I want to just draw it once through all of these cabinets, right? Because they're all associated to the wall, I can go to 2D drawings, draw product sections, and instead of picking the cabinet, I can pick the wall. And then I just need to make the distance to where it cuts through these cabinets. So we're talking now the distance from the end of the wall from the left, distance in X. And so I remember these were 20, so 10 should get me into the middle here. And then I should be, but I don't remember if I picked mm -hmm. left or right. Okay. So then he gives me a section through all the cabinets at that X location on the wall. So because they're all associated with the wall, I can just pick the wall and tell the distance that'll cut through all these. So I can do it again for these and get just the toe kick for it. And it actually, with that, I believe, say I wanted it. I don't know exactly. I know I don't, I want to cut it here. This works. I don't know if I can do draw product sections, pick the wall. And then I pick the cutting point. Pick this one. Well, I didn't want to place it there, but he saw what I did. 
picking the cutting plane, I was able to pick that line I drew and it cut the section at that distance from here. So now I just got this base cabinet to the toe kick that's below it because they're both attached to the wall. So in general, when we draw attached to walls, it gives us the ability to make sure that our elevations draw all the cabinets that we want that are attached to the wall, as well as to more easily cut sections.